If you're anything like me, then as soon as you saw this for the first time, you wanted some goddamn answers. And that's what I sought after once I came to the realization that, oh, it's just physics. Let me do some math and figure it out. So that's what we're going to be showcasing today is exactly how Mash Bundetto can do everything he does. All right. So first we have to figure out a lot of the variables surrounding um, like Mash reaching certain heights in the air and being able to float around and everything like that. So we're going to keep in mind that Mash is 171 meters tall and is 66.5 kilograms of weight. Now, this is gonna be relevant later, so we're just gonna keep it in mind. And we're also gonna round his height to 170 centimeters so that, you know, quick maths. For Match to simply reach the altitude that Wahlberg and Innocent Zero are floating at, he's gonna to have to produce a lot of Newtons of force. We can tell that Wahlberg and Innocent Zero's altitude seems to be around the peak of nearby mountaintops and around twice as high as the nearby like surrounding large hills. And you'll also notice that those surrounding hills have deciduous trees on them. Those are not evergreen trees, not all of them at least. And deciduous trees are like oaks and maples and stuff like that. They typically don't grow at that high of altitudes or elevations, and there are some growing at the very top of the hills. So we can assume a few things from this and also notice in some of their shots, their feet are roughly where the bottom of like low clouds are. And we could get into cloud science as well, but that would take a little bit too long. Um, but all in all, we can generally assume that they're floating at around an elevation of 500 to 700 meters off the ground. So let's just go with 600 meters. Mashkun reaches Innocent Zero's altitude in what seems like less than a few seconds. Otherwise, Innocent Zero would be able to react and block and finish off Wahlberg before Mash interferes. Now, taking into account some of the science involved, the average 170 centimeter tall person can jump around half their height. If you want to make a person who's 170 centimeters tall, who weighs approximately 65 kil kilograms, which again is approximately what Mash weighs, you're gonna need to produce 1,755 newtons of force in order to jump 85 centimeters high. Now, what we wanna do is jump 600 meters high. So what we're gonna to wanna to do here is divide 600 meters by 0.85 so that we get how many average jumps, like the total number of average jumps it would take to reach that altitude, oh, whoops. which is gonna be 705.88. And multiplied by 1755 will get us the amount of Newtons that is gonna be need to be produced in order to have MASH actually reach the altitude that <laughs> Innocent Zero and Wahlberg song are at. So times 1755 is gonna give us 1,238,823.53 newtons of force. Now for reference, one of the highest ever recorded newtons from a front kick from a martial artist here on earth produces around 8,000 newtons of force. And at that point, your average uh, bone like strength and density of a human, like an average adult human being is gonna be shattering um, around twice. So like if you get kicked in the sternum with 8,000 newtons of force, your sternum is probably going to crack like and shatter twice. Uh, for reference, uh, Conor McGregor in his prime, 1.2 million and so on newtons of force. That would be the equivalent of around 150 Conor McGregor kicks simultaneously. So obviously that would instantly kill uh, anybody um, on earth ever. Now we also have to take into account the drag coefficient of a human being, which head first is around 0.7. This is feet first and head first. So if a skydiver is around 0.7. Uh, so when you're traveling through the air, you're gonna be slowed at a rate of, it depends on a lot of different factors, but basically uh, we're gonna be slowing down. We just naturally slow down while we move through any state of matter. And taking all of that into account, on top of gravity, which we're assuming is 9.81 meters per second squared, same as the gravity here on Earth, and MASH also reaches that point and knees Innocent Zero in the face with enough force to interrupt him. So taking all of that into account, that's where we get like 300 meters per second. You're gonna wanna travel 600 meters in less than a few seconds uh, in order to take someone by surprise in the air and then also hit them with enough force because you have enough velocity left over to transfer into that object. Now, this is actually the easy part to calculate. Now onto 
the hard part. To actually hover in the air by kicking and only kicking because he's not using his arms. We see that multiple times. He doesn't use his arms. This part is less realistic than jumping 600 meters in the air in just a few seconds. Quick fun fact, air and water act in very similar ways, which is why the field of fluid dynamics studies how objects move through liquids and gases. So it stands to reason if you can tread water, you can tread air because they are both fluids and the way that they react are very similar. There are like vortexes in water and there are tornadoes in air and they both, you know. Anyways, you'll notice in every animation shown from the front, from the side, from different angles that mash his legs cross over the midpoint of his body's like Z axis. So his legs are like moving side to side. Now, there are two ways to tread water. There's the modified breaststroke kick and the egg beater. And MASH has to be doing the egg beater here, you know, because he's crossing over his Z-axis midpoint. So he's egg beating in the air in order to hover in the air. Now, we know it has to be a slightly modified egg beater kick. Now, slightly modified, I mean, it just has to be at a more extreme angle. Rather than like kicking down, you're gonna wanna like <laughs> do some crazy shit anyway. Now, if it was as simple as calculating how much force you create while egg beating in water and multiplying it by roughly 775, because that's how much more dense water is than air, so you're gonna have to exert that much more like force, that it would all be simple. It, it would be simple, just take into account buoyancy and we'd be done. That's not, that's not how, that's not how you hover. There are too many factors to take into account to be able to do that in a one-to-one -one fashion like that. So I don't know when I had the epiphany, but I realized that basically your legs in egg beater position, like in the egg beater motion, can act like helicopter blades do. But I realized I had no idea how helicopters work. So I, I so I got to studying. And there are terms like air vortices, like outside ground effect and angle of attack. And those are all extremely important terms to understand how helicopters hover in the air or even move at all. Air, yeah, any aircraft moves through the air. And what's funny is that MASH is also hovering up there. He is he turned his body into an aircraft okay so pilots and physics students are going to ridicule me in the comments section with this explanation but basically you need an airfoil which are just sleekly designed objects that are aerodynamic to produce sufficient lift so you'll see here in this diagram that basically you want more air passing underneath an airfoil than you do above it so that there's less <laughs> so that there's less matter in the way basically so it sort of creates a vacuum effect so it raises things up over time. That's how like airplane wings work. That's how uh, helicopter blades work. Cause helicopter blades are just are just like airplane wings, just like long skinny and rotate instead of moving forward with propulsion pushing it forward. It's uh, propulsion like spinning it. Both of them have more air <laughs> flow fucked. This is also easier to do if you are a distance away from the ground, uh, but not too high. Otherwise the air density uh, is too low in like the outer atmospheres and alongside other factors as well. Uh, 600 meters though, uh, for what we're talking about is perfectly fine. As long as the altitude they're at isn't already at like 7,000 meters. There's a large margin for error here. And I would assume Mash, Kuhn, Wahlberg, San, and Innocento Zero are all beneath the like 9,000 meter elevation mark. Okay, okay, enough, enough about elevation. Let's go back to the airfoil talk. So funnily enough, the calf makes a pretty decent airfoil like it has that straight edge and then it has the and then it has the curved part of it as well our calves are decently aerodynamic for some reason as soon as i made that connection everything started to like click more in my head i was like oh what mash is doing hovering in the air is actually like not impossibly like it doesn't defy the laws of physics it just defies like how strong our bodies are so that that's it's just kind of cool so our calves are eerily similar to actually how helicopter blades are designed so it stands to reason that if you were able to egg beat your legs quickly enough at very extreme angles meaning you have to be extremely flexible strong etc you could in fact produce upward thrust to allow you to hover or even lift yourself off the ground uh, just by simply egg beating um 
And those are the numbers we're looking for here, which is basically rotations per minute, but for your calves. <laughs> Never heard of that before. Now, small helicopters generally have uh, between 400 to 500 rotations per minute. So let's go with 500 to be as strict as possible with the numbers. And also those small helicopters can weigh very small amounts. There are things called ultralight helicopters and the world record for weight of a helicopter is 70 kilograms. Now, if you remember, MASH is 66.5 kilograms. That's just a few more kilograms. So what's funny is the amount of lift required to lift that helicopter is about the same as what it would take to lift MASH off the ground. We need to produce even slightly less lift than we would have to on like the smallest helicopter in the world. Just saying, just saying, it's it's more reasonable that it's more reasonable than we than like most people think. Now we just need to figure out a couple more numbers to figure out exactly uh, how Mash is pulling this off. Now there are a lot of published scientific papers discussing drag and how helicopters work and like the different angles of attack that you want to go at with your um, with your helicopter blades and. Really quickly, the angle of attack is, there's so much to explain, holy shit. If this airfoil right here was moving directly left and the relative wind was going directly right, then the angle of attack is like whatever the angle from neutral position that the airfoil is based at. So in this case, it would be like a 15% angle of attack. Anyways, now very specifically, you'll remember that the drag coefficient of a human being at um, head first is 0.7, which slows you down immensely. However, the drag coefficient for 90 degree angle of attack on airfoils is depending on the shape, usually in the range of 1.45 to 2.06. That means it's it's like it's got basically twice to three times more drag. So it's gonna be interacting with like two to three times more air is the best way to think about it. So there's gonna be like two to three times more particles being pushed around. Now you'll see here, it is found that the helicopter blade experiences a high drag due to its motion towards its own whirling wake. There's there's more air being jumbled around, so you're gonna be interacting with more air because it's all, it's all like in a huge vortex, resulting in an effective drag coefficient of approximately 5.3 for 90 degree angle of attack, up from 1.45 or 2.06 that we read down below. Now, this is all very important to understand. We need these numbers and these ideas to be able to accurately like get a rough a guess of an estimate of like how MASH is hovering. Now in this case, let's assume the same angle of attack for MASH's calves and helicopter blades. But MASH's calves have a higher drag coefficient because he's wearing pants. <laughs> they are like fairly tight pants, but fabrics specifically have very high drag coefficients. And it's important to realize that basically the more drag an object has, like the higher its drag coefficient, the more lift is gonna be required. So in this case, what that kind of concept means is that the rotations per minute is gonna to have to be higher for MASH's calves than a helicopter blade. <laughs> because uh, more rotations per minute means more air passing underneath than above the airfoils in question, meaning there's gonna be more lift upwards and we need more lift because the drag coefficient's higher because so we're getting, okay. Now to figure out how many more rotations per minute we need, we need to figure out if the relationship between lift and drag is linear or exponential or logarithmic. Anyways, very long story short, there's actually something called the Reynolds number. And this is basically gonna tell you exactly that. I'm just realizing how fucking ridiculous this is. <laughs> like, we have to go so deep for this. Now, uh, this graph shows the drag coefficient on the left and the Reynolds number on the bottom. Now, the Reynolds number is basically like how fast something's moving through a fluid. In this case, this graph represents a sphere being propelled through a space full of air. The best way to describe this graph is how an airplane takes off. You know when you're just moving, getting ready to take off on the runway, it's, you're going pretty smooth, you don't really feel any jostling, and then you reach a certain point, it's like very jostly right before takeoff and a little bit after takeoff. Um, that's what this like turbulent portion looks like. And then when you reach cruising altitude and cruising speed, it's smooth again. And that's what this part shows. And if the graph continued on, it would, continue to look like this because it's smooth after a certain point. But long story short, it's not linear, it's not exponential, it's not logarithmic or anything like that. And it depends on a lot of factors as you can see here, of course, of course. However, in this case, generally, 
multiplying the amount of rotations per minute taken by 2.5 is gonna give us a very rough, very rough, not precise at all, guess of an estimate of an approximation. It's very inaccurate, but it's not too inaccurate. You know what I mean? Now, Mash, we're considering him 170 meters tall for quick maths instead of 171 centimeters. And you'll notice he's about 40% leg. And you'll also notice that his calves are around 40% of his legs, meaning his airfoil length is 16% of 170 centimeters. So now we can multiply 170 centimeters by 0.16 to get a 16% of that. And that's gonna be 27.2 centimeters is like how long his calves are. In this case, how long his airfoils are. And that is a lot shorter than the airfoil on a helicopter. Now on average, helicopter blades are 2.5 meters in length or 250 centimeters, which is approximately 27.2 which is approximately 9.2 times longer, which means they're going to be providing roughly that times more lift. So if helicopters have 500 rotations per minute in order to gain enough lift to lift off the ground like that, then that means MASH is gonna have to do 9.2 times as much because there's that much less of an airfoil providing that much more lift. So we have to multiply the 500 RPMs by 9.2, which is gonna give us this number, but hold on, we also have to take into account the Reynolds number because the drag coefficient is much higher on pant legs and calves and human beings than for, um, than for, than for <laughs> metals. So we're gonna multiply that by the 2.5. We're gonna need 11,500 rotations per minute. Now 11,500 rotations divided by 60 to get rotations per second is going to net us 192 rotations per second. We want to figure out how much distance is being traveled by Mash's calves in this situation. So we need to figure out the total circumference of the like path that Mash's calves are like egg beating on, which to get circumference, we all know is the airfoil is the length times uh, two to get the diameter and then multiply it by pi, which is 3.14159 continued. And that's gonna give us 170 centimeters of distance being traveled 192 times per second. Again, the rotations per second is 192 times 192. This is how many centimeters is being traveled per second. Now we'll divide that by 100 to get meters. So Mash's calves are traveling at 328 meters per second at 192 rotations per second or 11,500 rotations per minute. Fun fact, the sound barrier is 343 meters per second. So Mash's calves are traveling just underneath the sound barrier. Very interesting. And for reference, that's three football fields, American or actual football fields being traveled by this man's calves per second in a circle in order to produce that much lift. Okay, now what's funny is that that is only the second craziest part out of three. Now, <laughs> now we're not gonna calculate this next part, okay? Because it's actually too ridiculous and I wouldn't even know where to start. He kicks off of air, all right? This isn't like a Sanji kick. This isn't like a Kaijutsu, it's not a technique. He's simply kicking air and moving quickly through air after kicking off of it. Okay, now here's the, here's the, here. So in a vacuum, if you're in space and you kick, then an equal force is applied in the opposite direction. It's like a physical law, right? For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So you go, you go like kick that, then you'll move just that much and then you'll net zero. Now, if you're in an atmosphere and you're interacting with like air particles and such, when you kick, you're gonna be kicking some air particles away from you and a force is gonna be applied in the opposite direction. But because you kicked some air away, you're gonna go slightly to the side, just slightly. Now, if you've ever noticed like a punch or a kick before, uh, you can blow like a leaf way better with your mouth than with your hands or your feet. Wait, bro, pause. Hell, you could even blow better with your nose. Like, like you'll produce more force in your desired direction by blowing out your nose, just like normally, than you would with like a hundred different punches or like 50 different kicks or anything like that. It's actually ridiculous. I wouldn't even know where to get started to calculate like how he even kicks 
off of air, like how much force would be required. I'm not gonna keep doing this because it's like, the amount of like YouTube Academy shit that I've been watching, like, bro, I could pretty much fly a helicopter now. I've, I've watched so many tutorials, it's not even funny. Now, what's hilarious is obviously that this is all super unrealistic, but it's within like understanding. You know what I mean? That's the, that's what I, that's the takeaway for me is that um, like gigantic numbers, human beings have a really hard time grasping gigantic numbers. But in this case, the numbers for MASH to be able to like jump 600 meters in the air and hover there, obviously they're impossible, but they're not that unreasonable or incomprehensible. But like when it comes to kicking off the air, to be able to even move one millimeter in your desired direction, when you're kicking off of air, you're barely gonna move even like one millimeter with like a full double kick while you're like falling in air or while you're floating in air in this case. So to be able to move like even one meter in the desired direction over a long period of time. So like while you're falling, you'll move like that instead with the initial velocity and then you'll like slow down and come to a stop like X axis wise. Bro, not even like to be able to do that like quickly and close the gap between himself and Innocent Zero or to be able to save Wahlberg, that is incomprehensible. 192 rotations per second, that's not incomprehensible. You can understand that, but to be able to kick off the air, I would guess that he can probably jump out of the atmosphere if he wanted to. Like he's straight up one punch man, he's straight up Saitama, it's not even... <sighs> if you're still here watching this, wow, what is wrong with you? Thanks for watching though. This probably isn't even gonna get any views. <laughs> Why did I do all this? Why did I learn all this for no reason? Who learns, who learns this shit? Who reads academic papers like this? There's no fucking, who, bro, I saw like, oh my God.